So what have we got for you today? Well, the mirror has splashed on the revelation that a facial recognition expert claims a possible sighting of the renegade peer and renowned murderer Lord Lucan has indeed been proved to be him in Australia. Now, Alison, take us through this briefly because it is a splash. This is the, the son of his victim who's found this guy, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, sorry. I'm about to sneeze. Anyway, um, so what's really interesting about this is so um, that there's a, the, the leading facial recognition expert who is the guy who, um, do you remember the story about the um, Scripple poisoners where the, yeah. um, and there was the, the Russian, there were two Russian agents who had done it. So this is the guy who helped uncover the names of the agents that had, um, had, that had done that poisoning. Um, and now he has looked at some pictures of Lucan when he was, um, a child and also uh, when he before he went missing and now he's looked at pictures of um, an 87 year old man who is living in Australia and he says there is no doubt they are an exact match and he has these very very complex algorithms that you put the different faces in and I think we all know like the value of facial recognition now like most people have got telephones now where if you look at them they recognize your face to see it's you and not somebody else so it is like a really exact science and he is saying he believes this is the man who was tracked down, actually, by the um, the son of the nanny who was the murder victim. Yeah. So, and, and although it's been one of those things that's kind of throughout our lives, oh, where's Lord Lucan or whatever, you have to remember that at the heart of this, there was a young woman who was murdered, who left a child who grew up never knowing his mother. So it's, yeah. it is a human tragedy as well. Exactly. And it's, it was got a lot of you know, attention over the years because of the glamour of the people involved, because it was a peer, because he was part of this big gambling set and so on. But yeah, as you say, right, someone someone was murdered and someone never faced justice for that murder. And some people think Lord Lucan jumped off a ferry off the coast of New Haven, I think. Yes. Um, but this guy uh, in Australia has been found by the son of the victim and, and bears a shocking... Uh, resemblance should we say is a doppelganger at the very least because there's a lot of similarity yeah. I mean, between the, guy, the facial recognition expert so he's, he's a professor at the university of bradford and it's also being double sourced by um a facial recognition experts in the united states as well so the guy at the university of bradford says that only if um this that really it could be an identical twin that it could be that similar i mean the certainty with which this expert is speaking is is sort of quite incredible really but um so really, it's what happens next. So the big issue will be, will the Met Police reopen the investigation, which they've always seemed to have been quite reluctant to do? I mean, obviously, they've got huge other pressures on their time. But as we said, this is still a, a murder inquiry. Um, will they get out there, sit down with the guy? I'd have thought a very simple DNA test would be able to conclusively prove to the police that it is him or not him. Yeah. And whether the, the current Lord Luke and his son, who has the mm -hmm. just whether he wants to do that and cooperate with that um and whether of course the, the chap who is uh who is supposed to bear this resemblance whether he wants to sit down and talk to anybody as well i mean if i was completely innocent but happened to look like a famous killer i think i would like to talk down sit down and talk to people about it and say it's not me genuinely yeah. check yeah. but yeah. So we'll see what happens next, but it's very interesting. Yes, mm. no, exactly. Uh, now, Mike says, Lord Lucan would be a more welcome entrant into the celeb jungle than a disgraced and incompetent former health secretary, and it'd be the scoop of the decade for Ant and Deck. I don't know, though. I think if um, I think if they actually got the disgraced Lord Lucan in the jungle, I think that the people who are upset about Matt Hancock in there would really I find know. I wonder whether... I did watch it last night. I thought it was really good. I wonder what the viewers will think, though, when Matt Hancock turns up, because it's going to completely take it from being a fun, great, good feel, feel-good programme mm. into something that feels a little bit mm, horrible. Yeah, I suspect some of the people there... And it was really funny when you see them all meet each other at the start and they were like, Oh God, who's that? Oh, I'm Boy George. Kind yeah. of thing. And so is someone of Hollyoaks? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they have no idea who each other are at all. Um, but I suspect some of them are slightly better informed, Mike Tyndall, uh, Joel Scott, for example. And they might see Matt Hancock walk in and go, don't like you. And mm. there'll be some unhappiness, which is probably why they have recruited him, I expect. Yeah, I imagine. Now, 